of the things that I really enjoy while not flying is actually listening to airband frequencies. I do this while I'm working or when I'm studying or really just about any time. And one of the methods that I use is liveatc.net. Live to ATC.net is a pretty neat uh, website, totally not sponsored or anything, but what it does is it groups volunteers that are able to upload or stream um, airband frequencies that they're receiving at their location. So what this is is it actually brings together those frequencies and allows you to search using their web portal. Um, frequencies that you would be interested in and it has a lot of benefits however that's not really what this video is about because it has its limitations it's one of the best websites out there to bring these frequencies to you but um, it doesn't do a great job if you're looking for local frequencies or if you're trying to separate the frequencies that are in your area so as you can see here I searched just a local airport um, I'm in Richmond so this is Richmond International Airport and you can see that there are different people streaming different frequencies but there are not there is not a way to distinguish the two so with this particular one in this uh, listening link you get both approach and departure this one's um, delivery ground and tower and so on and so forth so it, you get kind of the gist there you're not able to break these frequencies up uh, in using their website secondary to that is if I find a more local airport um, where they don't have a tower or it's not well populated like uh, that class Charlie Airport they're not broadcasting this frequency at all so a way to actually do this and to hone in the frequencies that you want and listen for example um, to Chesterfield or Richmond Executive Airport which is near me I found out a way that you can use what's called an SDR setup and I'll show you what that cool is project. right now. It only really requires three things and one of the things is included in the package with your uh, SDR antenna adapter. You need this little guy here, the adapter, the antenna, and of course a computer. So pretty straightforward. Most of this is done in software. So what I'll do is I'll actually show you how to set up the software and to set it up to scan certain frequencies. And in our case, we're really focusing on the airband frequencies. So let me show you that now and we will uh, we'll get started. Uh, Microsoft's .NET framework and it's a free download if you don't have Windows 10 um, go to this website here I'll leave it in the description and you'll download the net uh, 4.7.2 or newer redistribution there and that will put the framework on there for this to, to work on your computer if you don't have it on your computer already uh, so after that you go to airspy.com I know the uh, name is a little ominous there but it's a legit uh, download you can of course run a um, virus checker on there but uh, what this is used for is frequency uh, testing so uh, this is going to be our software that we're going to be using to uh, for the frequencies um, so the first thing that you would do if you're running Windows of course is to click the download button there and it will download a zip file to your computer and then what you would do is you would open the zip file and open the zip file and extract all of these files uh, I would suggest putting them right on your desktop that's the easiest way to do it that's how I did it so what I'll do is I'll save you from that and I'll go straight to the file that I saved mine to and it's uh, this right here so you extract it to your desktop and then you double click on install rtlsdr.bat which is this file right here and you double click on that and what it'll do is it'll install the proper drivers for the uh, USB dongle uh, if you remember um, 
this guy right here on your computer. So once you do that, plug in your dongle. The next thing that you'll do is you'll want to set up the device uh, for your system and you do that by clicking on um, Zadig, this little uh, tool right here. And what that'll do is it'll bring up a window and then pretty easy you just click on options list all devices okay what you do is you click on this uh, little box here and you select it's probably either going to be bulk in interface interface zero or in my case and if you um, purchase the dongle that I'm showing you there it'll be the RTL 2832 and then uh, this afterwards there so after you click that you would click either replace driver which in most cases this will be a replace driver and in my case since I've already had the driver installed I would uh, click on reinstall driver so when I click that all it's doing is it's installing the appropriate drivers and tools to allow your dongle to be read by your computer now one quick note with this is if a screen pops up that says Windows Security and it gives you through the two options that say don't install the driver software or install this driver software you want to make sure that you click on install the driver software uh, this is a common Windows Security thing that pops up if you're installing any uh, drivers manually just like this once you've installed all the drivers you're ready to use the actual software and this is where you'll start listening to the frequencies that you would want to listen to. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on sdrsharp.exe and it will open this program here which is the SDR program. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to click the tools button and you want to select the um, appropriate device and a lot of times um, it's just the one device here and again if you use the dongle that I'm showing you here it's going to be automatically populated for you and you want to make sure that all of your settings look pretty similar to uh, mine right here um, if you have some problems with static you might want to come back to this and adjust this little RF gain slider uh, just depending on where you're at in the country. So after you've selected the dongle you're actually ready to go uh, straight from there. So you can close the box there and then you can hit the play button here and I'll stop it right there but the play button will activate the dongle and you'll start receiving the frequencies. And if you notice 93.1 I'm in the FM stations so this is just going to be like an FM radio right now and it's going to pick up those FM broadcasts and the cool thing about this is is that the frequency range of this dongle is immense it goes all the way up to 2 gigahertz in frequency all the way down to I don't even know what I mean it is really low in the spectrum you can go all the way and listen to ham radio frequencies which is pretty wild and uh, another neat thing about this if you notice is when I'm selecting the frequencies up here it's telling me what band that I'm at so if we go up to 108 in the frequency band it should tell us that yep or in the air band so it's picking up the VOR and ILS's um, and then all of your air band frequencies for in the sky and if you notice these peaks here these peaks represent transmissions so when I hit the play button I can go to these frequencies here and I might be able to pick up something I would do uh, once I get into uh, this program is I would normally just go to the frequencies that I'm interested in for example, the frequency of an airport that's close by that's not represented on the ATC Live uh, would be Richmond Executive Airport and I would want to listen to for say um, CTAF uh, Communications which the frequency for that is 23.05 so if I go back to this 23.123 
seven, whoop, five. And just like your radios in your aircraft, um, there might be a preceding five after that, and it might, because of the um, ability for this to pick up uh, way past the decimal point, very low frequency changes, uh, it might be somewhere else. So what I do is I hit the play button, and then I wait until someone starts talking, and then I dial into that frequency. Um, another thing is, is that you can adjust the amount of static on there by doing uh, noise reduction. If you come over here, and I'll try to show you, um, it might be difficult to record both the voice and the noise reduction thing, but what will happen is it will get rid of the uh, static sound. So let's give it a try here and hit play. And if you notice, it's gotten rid of all of that uh, static noise there. So the best thing to do is um, adjust both the audio noise reduction and then also, like I said, the gain. You might want to lower or um, strengthen the gain there. And it's at the same volume, and I'm not sure if anybody will be talking in just a few minutes there, but if they do, you'll notice a peak. Uh, and then what you would want to do is just click on the pink peak to uh, dial into that frequency. So that's pretty much it. Um, the best way I can see to get all the frequencies that um, you would want thing is is that they do sell scanners, but the scanners out there, I think the least expensive one that I could find that's uh, pretty heavily um, advertised is around two hundred dollars this will cost you about twenty bucks um, the software is free uh, it's for research so it's it's given to the public free and then also uh, if you want to build a uh, antenna uh, a better antenna for this I have another video that I'll link the description in um, that will reach very far and it's just made out of coax cable so uh, you probably have some laying around the house if you have cable TV or satellite so and let me know if anybody's interested in me putting together the Raspberry Pi SDR project this way uh, you'd be able to carry the SDR in your car or make it a little bit more mobile um, I think we can pretty much do it with a few components, the uh, SDR, the Raspberry Pi, uh, an adapter, and of course probably a power bank. So let me know if you're interested and use in the comments below or messaging me and I will put this together for you. Alright, have a great one and stay safe up there.